Welcome back to Haint No News. And uh, it's been the second half of a week is the way I'd like to look at this because I think this can be a, a bi weekly thing or not. We'll see how it goes. But the second part of the week will be the uh, week that went into the weekend. It's now Sunday morning as I'm speaking here. Uh, it wasn't so great for podcasting. Of course, you know, with this developmental process of this Hank No News, it's not all going to be about uh, podcasting as it turns out. Because there's other things that go on. Uh, the way that did go on with some of the podcasts that I watched, I mentioned in the last episode, first episode, the Flagrant 2 podcast. Well, they had another one of those with a guest's name was Drewski. Now, Drewski was a comedian who goes out with rappers, and they were kind of dogging him a little bit, asking him if he was uh, Jewish because he came up so fast in the entertainment business. And the name kind of lends itself to that. And I think uh, it'd be kind of a, you know, a good thing for the Jewish producers to do, sort of put a little tag on which uh, entertainers that they've brought into the business, like uh, how about Snoop Doggy Dogstein or uh, Dr. Dreyberg, you know, give them a nice little tag so you promote your own people too as you bring them up in. And that's more what uh, I want to talk about with the Drewski because his stories he told, he... The two things I found especially interesting was he told about how he ran away at the age of 21, and uh, in which case they laughed at him, dogged him about it a little bit, said, 21, you're already an adult, that's not running away, you know, they said, that's the whitest thing they ever heard, they said, okay, well, we'll get back to that, but then the uh, other thing was he was talking about how he, for the longest time he didn't wipe his butt, and it was like 9 or 10 years old, and he still wasn't wiping his butt, and is it too soon for us to say the word, say the phrase "black privilege"? Because come on, now it's not good for anybody's benefit if if we everybody's treated with these other myths of uh, language. Because you know, I'm seeing my people, the people that look like me, let's say, completely impoverished. Okay, completely impoverished and still have to keep hearing about this white privilege that they supposedly have. And it's not always a real thing. And the reason it comes down like this is the people that are talking about it in entertainment are the rich white people. And yeah, I mean, they're privileged, right? And so they get there. They can't get there if they don't let on that they're privileged and they got to say they're privileged and they are privileged. But how can they do it with a clear conscience when they know that so many people that look like them have no privilege whatsoever? And so, and then meanwhile, their equally rich counterparts of other ethnicities are like, yep, yep, the, you know, the blacks and Indians, and, and when I say Indians, I mean from the country of India, are going, yep, yep, that's white privilege, it's real, all right, yep, mm-hmm. Bobby Lee, yeah, white privilege is real. You know, all these guys talk about white privilege, and they know that there's no innate privilege to being white. It's just not the case. I mean, and this Drewski guy is evidence of it. I mean, it, you might be able to be. I'm sure there are white people who aren't wiping their butts at 10 years old and are considered when they leave home at 21 running away. I'm sure that is that happens. But they're not on flagrant podcast as celebrities talking about it. See the difference? Mm-hmm. So we got to start using this term. And now in a more direct, direct thing, let's bring it home to the hills of West Virginia and talk about black privilege a little bit. I worked at a sawmill, and the whole time I worked there, it was all white people. You know, it was uh, wow people getting fingers smashed it was always one point or another always had at least one toenail or fingernail that was completely black from getting smashed and it got to where the nerves in those and my toes and fingers were so numb that i wouldn't even know it happened till i was home because the nerves were already dead and once your nerves are dead the more often it happens you know and fingers got lost and everything like that and you know you grind and you sweat and you it's in a aluminum building and it's 110 in the summertime and it's 20 degrees in the wintertime or colder you know sometimes below zero inside the building because there's no heat to blow you might there were heaters in certain locations but it was an open building so you had to be right 
beside the heater and not all people had the privilege to be beside one much of the day or the fan for that matter and there was no air conditioners at any point so anyhow that's just a but that was all survival you know and it's that's the benefits of it where you live out in the country and you get to fish and hunt and stuff like that that's your privileges of the uh living in west virginia and so that's the life you the price you pay you know when you live on a frontier you don't have the cushy lifestyle so much as you would or but you do have the the benefits of nature and the goodness of nature anyhow uh, then eventually there was a young black man came to work there and he only worked there for a few weeks and now he's good good person good worker uh, good per- good worker, good young man. I liked him. I mean, I liked him better than oh, 99% of the people I worked with there. And I liked some of, a lot of them too. I say 99. I say 94. Better than 94% of the people I worked with. And uh, but he didn't work there very long. And why didn't he work there very long? Because he went and applied at a place for the uh, where they were building corridor H, and he got offered a job making $35 an hour right away. And I ran into him, and I was, you know, after he got the job, and I was like, hey, do you think, uh, or I, he, you know, because he, he finished out two weeks' notice, and I'm like, do you think I could get on there? He's like, tell you the truth, Bob. He's like, no. He's like, I, I walked in there, and, you know, I was already told to go there, and they told me well, as soon as I walked in the door, they were like, great, because they needed they needed minorities, and they needed to fill quota, and so he got the job right away. And then I saw him uh, a month or two later, you know, and it was his store. And I was like, hey, so how's that job going on? He's like, well, actually, I'm uh, on layoff right now, drawing unemployment. And I said, oh, man, that stinks. When do you get to get back? He's like, oh, actually, Bob, it's up to me, you know. So things were working out real good for him. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean his life is easy. It doesn't mean that he there's not some down. Uh, I mean, for one thing, he's surrounded by white people all the time, and I don't know what that exactly what that feels like for him, you know. But I am saying that there was a certain amount of systematic privilege, and as far as people burning crosses in his yard and beating him up for the color of his skin and stuff, none of that goes on that I've ever seen in my lifetime around here. So that's just a facts, and uh, that's why. But you don't have to believe it because you can say that that's, and you don't have to because this is called Hank No News, all right? So that's uh, was the flagrant podcast. And then uh, what else was there? Well, later on in the week, the big issue that was going on throughout the week, it wasn't so much on the podcast, was the, uh, and I pronounced, mispronounced it in episode one. Her name is not Brittany Grinder, it's Brittany Griner. And that Henri Andrew Schultz is the one that mispronounced it, and I repeated it like a dumb parrot. I pretty much, I repeated it wrong, but it's actually Griner, Brittany Griner. Now, what I gotta say about that is, that if it's true that she was part of a CIA mission to help get rally support against a resistance against the Soviet Union. And to rally uh, people in a cry to get people to want to go to battle with Russia, then I think she deserves the hero status that the CIA promised her. I don't think we should treat her like she was. Uh, we had to do something oh so great to bail her out because the average citizen didn't do anything for her. You know what I mean? And was it cushy and wonderful to be over there? Probably not. I mean, from the footage I saw, she kind of looked like she. You know, like when you set a basketball player down because they've got four fouls, she's like, oh, come on. You know, she looked, mm, oh, put me back in the game, you know, type deal. She she didn't look happy, you know, so she deserves something for that. And something I looked up, and a person needs to keep in mind that you're not allowed to take Delta 8 a THC over to a Soviet Union either, so... Don't take anything over there. Don't no Delta Eight cartridges or nothing like that. And in fact, my advice now this ain't no news, so you no, you don't have to take my advice. But I'm just saying, I probably wouldn't go to Russia if uh, I planned on coming back. Honestly, at this point in the way things are in the world right now, just don't go over there. Be my advice. Just don't, because something you could get, you know, arrested for something and. They might not bail you out unless you were a superstar at something. And 
I mean, come on. First of all, I, it seems so suspicious that they love women's basketball so much. I mean, how will we act right now with the tension in the world if there's like some eight foot tall Russian woman with a she got no uh, American accent at all. She got this Russian accent. If she come over here, because uh, Brittany Grinder, I don't, I, I don't think she talked Russian or anything. I think she was like an American woman over there. Uh, if, if some Russian woman just suddenly appears here and we're like, oh, yeah, we love uh, gymnastics so much that we brought this Russian girl to just drop her off in the middle of the country, and she's she's got something illegal. She's got, like, uh, what's illegal in America? Um, she's got some x-ray goggles or something on. She's like, oh, these aren't legal around here, you know? Oh, I didn't know. I mean, we might have detained her, too, you know? It's just hard to say. So just given the state of things right now, probably just best to don't go to Russia. Don't go. And other than that, this week, now the RAP podcast on Friday night's YouTube broadcast of it was excellent. Very, very funny. Highly recommend that one. It was really the funniest podcast I saw of the week. Then comes Saturday, and I watch uh, Yanni Pappas. used to be called the Long Days Podcast, but I think he's changed the name of it because he doesn't have Jared Hartman on it no more, which was his, Jared Hartman was his, uh, line of tether to the uh, young people, I guess, is the way he envisioned it, envisioned it in his head, because Jared Hartman's a young uh, black man, funny kid, and uh, was part of his podcast, but he was, wasn't was on this one, and there was a name change, and also, Jared Hartman's from Long Island, so I think that could have been why they couldn't call it Long Days with uh, Yanni Papas anymore, because no longer has the Long Island connection there. So anyhow, it wasn't very good. I didn't like it that much. It was, uh, he, he tried to be very news. And he's kind of pessimistic, you know. He's like, if if you're starting your podcast out now, it's going to fail. This whole thing is, everybody's going to jail. I think that was the title of it. Something like, it's final scene of Goodfellas and everybody's going to jail. It's like, okay there, Yanni. Uh, maybe you should go. Honestly, I don't know. Nah, I don't mean that. But uh, he's very pessimistic sometimes. And he seems to think his crap don't stink too sometimes like buddy sometimes you're not that funny pal hate to break the news to you big shot but sometimes you're not now that being said is great his last stand-up act comedy act was uh very very good one of the best ones should have got more views than it did so that's probably why he's grumpy you know so we got to be tolerant of each other oh somebody else uh who deserves more good uh kudos i gotta say is i like him anyhow because people dog him crap on him all the time uh, opie hughes who was part of the opie and anthony radio show i i think the man's got a good heart like and i think it shines through now he tend if as soon as he starts to feel cool a little bit and he starts to crap on people and that's a bad tendency you know but it was made for funny radio with anthony so but he's got to remember to being nice to people is kind of his good thing, and that's what he should probably continue to do. That's my opinion of it. But like I say, I like it. I, I like following his career and uh, seeing what he develops in, into. And I, you know, I like to give him a little lend some support to him because I think he gets gets a lot of crap he doesn't deserve because he gave opened up the doors to people in radio. See, in the entertainment business and then radio business and the legacy form that it's in, somebody has to open the door to an outsider to get in there. And he kind of opened up the door to Anthony uh, Cumia to get in there. And then everybody loves Anthony, and all these years later, he's still getting loved. But let's not forget who opened that door to the man. Like, let's not forget the guy who went to get the degree in broadcasting and all that, and, you know, and then reached out a hand to help the other guy out. So... That's I, I, just the way I look at things. I think you always got to be loyal to that person. So what if they were, if you want to think that they were privileged or whatever. They, hey, privileged people don't have to open up any doors to anybody. And if they do, you owe some gratitude to them. And you can't turn your back. Oh, well, they weren't, they're not like me. They didn't have it as hard as me. You bud, you could have had it harder if they hadn't opened up a door for you. So that's the way I look at it. So Opie Hughes, I like that guy. And, uh like to support his career. Oh, something I didn't say about uh, the Flagrant Podcast, you know, is Dove, the the uh, quote-unquote Jewish producer of that show, I look at the man and I see he looks just like my friend Muhammad from Pakistan. So that goes to show you can't always judge a book by the cover because he looks Pakistani to me. 
for what that's worth. But uh, shout out Dove. I think he's your your good dude too. From what I've seen of you, um, I like how you guys you interact with the crew there. Um, what else we got? Tim Dillon came on late night last night. Uh, he was very distracted with financial news. Now Tim's got he's accumulated in his career a lot of money. So when there's big financial news, it kind of dominates his uh, mindset. So he was tearing into that, but he still had some funny takes on some stuff. Some uh, some Bobert uh, politician out in Colorado, he was having a good laugh at. That was funny. And then the topper of the week, and the final thing I'm going to discuss here at 15 and some minutes into this podcast is Crack Amico released a new uh, track last night called F Santa Claus, and I thought that was the shiznit in his red and black uh, flannel sporting and so with that check it out and hate no news till the next no news later <laughs>